Hello and welcome to Chemix. Today we'll be synthesizing ethyl bromide or bromoethane by reacting ethanol with hydrobromic acid. From left to right, here are all the chemicals we'll need. 2 moles of ethanol or 118 grams, 3 moles of hydrobromic acid or 340 milliliters, and 1 mole of concentrated sulfuric acid or 98 grams, but I've added a little more since my acid is not entirely 100% pure. You might be wondering why I don't use the hydrobromic acid we made in the last video. Well, I used it all up for tests and it failed so I have to redo this experiment. And since I didn't have any more and I didn't feel like making any more, I'm using some commercial hydrobromic acid. But this has been sitting on the shelf for quite a while so it has taken on a slightly yellow color which I suspect is elemental bromine so I'm going to add a spatula of red phosphorus and then put the hydrobromic acid and the sulfuric acid back in the freezer to pre-cool them for our experiment. The first thing we have to do is add the sulfuric acid to our ethanol. I therefore have a one liter flask containing the ethanol sitting in an ice bath on top of which I've added a Claisen adapter with an addition funnel and a cooler. The addition funnel contains our sulfuric acid and the cooler is there to condense any ethanol that might boil off since the addition is quite exothermic. I've adjusted a constant drip rate and now we wait for the addition to finish. All of the sulfuric acid has been added and I filled up the addition funnel with our hydrobromic acid. We can start slowly adding it to our reaction flask while maintaining a low temperature. All of the hydrobromic acid has been added, so I'm going to switch out our cooling bath for a heating bath and set up for fractional distillation of our product. I've set up for fractional distillation and here I have my boiling flask sitting in an oil bath so we can distill off our product. The boiling flask is followed by a Vigreux column and a still head to which I've attached our digital thermometer probe we built in a previous video. And last but not least we have my Dimroot cooler which leads into our collection flask which is sitting in a water bath to which I will add some ice later on. I've turned on the heating, so while everything slowly warms up, let's talk a little bit about what's actually happening here. The formation of bromoethane is a classical equilibrium, meaning that to drive the reaction to completion, we have to either add some educts or remove products. In our case, bromoethane conveniently has the lowest boiling point of the mixture, so we can distill off all of our product, thus driving the whole reaction to completion. You can see vapors are slowly starting to rise in the Vigreux column, so this indicates we will soon start collecting product. The reaction has now really started and we collect product at a pretty fast rate. One thing to note is that it's pretty easy to overheat the whole thing, because the reaction does need quite a bit of heat to get started, but once it does it's very easy to overshoot your column and ruin your yield. So just be gentle, be patient, heat it up very slowly and once it reaches a nice constant boil, leave it at that temperature. Here is our collection flask where we are currently collecting our bromoethane. The procedure calls for 2-3 to three drops of dislip per second, so I guess we should be alright. The still air temperature is currently reading a nice constant 37-38 to 38 degrees Celsius. So this corresponds very well to the theoretical boiling point of 38 degrees C. But bear in mind it is very easy to overshoot your column with liquids this low boiling so just be patient and don't rush it. The drip rate is going down significantly so I think we're approaching the end of our distillation. I'm going to continue distilling until nothing more comes over or the temperature in the still head rises way above the boiling point of bromoethane. The temperature in the still had rose and the distillate started smelling like methyl ethyl ketone. So at 45 degrees Celsius I switched out our receiving flask and therefore stopped the distillation. So here's our yield of crude bromoethane. 
We're going to further purify it by first washing it and then later on sealing it a second time. I've added all of our product into a separatory funnel and we're going to wash it a couple of times now. First, we're going to wash it with concentrated sulfuric acid two times and I've chilled this sulfuric acid in the freezer. This serves to remove any traces of ether that might have formed as a side product. In order to wash it, I add roughly one-fifth of its volume of concentrated cold sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is more dense than our product, so the sulfuric acid will form the bottom layer and our product will remain in the top layer. You have to be careful during this step because it can easily and readily form some, uh, emulsions. We cap, shake and vent our funnel in order to properly wash our crude product. We now let the two phases properly separate and drain off the lower sulfuric acid layer. Then I will repeat this exact same procedure another time. After the second sulfuric acid wash we will do one water wash. The water should be the top layer this time. First, I drain the lower layer containing our product. Then I drain uh, the aqueous layer, which will be discarded. Now I close the stop cork and add our organic layer back into the top. Now there is still some acid in our organic layer, so we're going to neutralize this acid with a concentrated solution of baking soda. The same as during our water wash. The baking soda layer will be the top one. And same as always, cap it, shake it and vent it, but vent it very often since if there is some acid present it will form carbon dioxide, so be sure to vent it very often. Alright, now I'm going to do one last water washing off camera. After the last water washing, we're left with our final yield of 157.5 grams of bromoethane. This corresponds to a percent yield of 72.3, which for me is totally fine, but it is quite low compared to the literature value of 90. But since my hydrobromic acid was of unknown origin and I didn't know its exact concentration, I'm perfectly fine with what I got. 
I'm going to add some calcium chloride to this and then store it in the freezer until I use it. That about wraps up the synthesis. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, I hope you liked it. Leave me any comments in the comment section down below. Like, for example, if I should go into more details on the mechanism the next time. Or just anything you have in your mind, really. And um, yeah, give me a thumbs up if you want. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one.